Hello. Uh, today I would like to introduce you a new version of the World Atlas of Last Interglacial Shorelines interface 1.70. Uh, we have been working for the last few months uh, in the background to improve some things uh, um, r specifically related to how the records were treated inside the database and how they were extracted, etc. But we also have uh, a major news uh, in terms of which data can be inserted into Wallis. Um, so far, we only had the Pleistocene uh, data points that could be inserted, but right now we also inserted uh, the possibility to add Holocene sea level index points. This was made possible thanks to the work of the Holsey community, which is uh, a community spearheaded by Nicole Khan at the University of Hong Kong and including many sea level uh, uh, scientists working on the Holocene. And what they did was basically already a couple of years ago um, adding uh, uh, or, or putting together a number of templates uh, for reporting radiocarbon ages and for reporting um, um, Holocene sea level uh, index points. So we didn't do anything new, we just took this work from Nicole Kahn et al and we put it into a uh, the framework of, uh, of the last interglacial database. Uh, therefore now it's possible to actually insert Holocene data uh, and the interface looks exactly like uh, the other ones we're used to see for the last interglacial. Here is uh, uh, a uh, selection, a first selection of the references, for example. Um, and then it's possible or it's necessary to select uh, which kind of uh, age technique has been used to assign an age to the sea level index point. Uh, the major difference between the Holocene and the Pleistocene uh, uh, template is that uh, uh, while the Pleistocene allows for one to many relationships, this means that one sea level indicator has can have many samples dated. The Holocene only allows for a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, dating. So one sea level index point uh, is connected to one and only one uh, age. So whenever you go down here, you have an exclusive, exclusive selection between radiocarbon, you know, series, luminescence, uh, AAR, beryllium 10, tephra, varv sediments, archeological dating or other. Um, whenever you go, you select one of these, uh, a field will appear here that is specific to the uh, dating methods you just selected. So, uh, for example, if I select U series here, uh, I will be able to tap onto the U series uh, um, database that we have uh, within the dated samples here. And so you will see that uh, I can select any, any age. In this case, we only have for now. Uh, last interglacial ages, uh, but uh, you can see that they compile down here and then you would be requested to uh, put the age here. For example, for this one, uh, I would have to convert from kilo years, which is unfortunately how we report ages for uh, um, last interglacial or Pleistocene, uh, Pleistocene sea level index points. So I will convert it to years and then I will make it six plus or minus 610. Now to confirm this age, now I just wrote this age into the Holocene spreadsheet and to confirm it, what I need to do is just go here and compile, uh, compile the ages that I just inserted. So this is basically how I take an age from the dating samples database and put it inside um, the Holocene database. Um, for radiocarbon, uh, we also took the uh, template by Khan et al. And, uh, uh, right now there are no radiocarbon samples inside. We are starting to put some of them inside just for, for an example. Uh, but if I click on here, edit, I will be able to, oops, I will be able to insert a, uh, radiocarbon, a radiocarbon age in here. And then I would be able to select it here from this drop down menu and then to compile the age. This is very important every time I insert uh, any kind of age here. So for example, a luminescence age, you see that luminescence is available here. I have to insert the numbers here, insert the real ages here, and then I have to go down here and compile it. If this is empty, uh, it will not allow you to save the record of the sea level index point. So this is something, this is the only thing worth reminding when compiling Holocene sea level index points. And then all of these fields uh, are described into uh, the template by Khan et al. 
um, but uh, we also copied and pasted literally here um, the instructions that Kanetal give in their uh, in their template. So this is actually uh, this is actually just a, a translation of of the the templates that were already available inside our database templates. Same for elevation measurement techniques. You can tap on to what is already in the in the Pleistocene or last interglacial sea level database, or you can add your own uh, elevation measurement uh, elevation measurement technique here. Uh, there are lots of other news, some uh, graphical, uh, new graphical things, for example, in the Pleistocene. There used to be some pictures here, but they were very heavy, so we just have now some, uh, um, uh, some icons to, to guide you to the usual forms for inserting Pleistocene sea level data that, that you know about. Uh, in the dated samples, of course, uh, we added uh, radiocarbon and archaeological ages, which are um, the novelties for, for the Holocene. Uh, if you notice here, there are also some beryllium 10 and tephra and varved sediments uh, um, um, fields that you can insert. In this case, you're not tapping into any existing table, you just have to insert the age, uh, the age here as, uh, as, a, as a standalone uh, record in the Holocene table. Um, there's not much else. Uh, uh, there are uh, quite a few news about, for example, uh, the, the help tips. Uh, we slightly changed the, the, the language behind the read the docs, so now we, we use a slightly different language. This makes it a little bi bit more interactive and a little bit um, uh, better to, to consult. And especially if you go down here, you can also um, you can also download the entire manual as a PDF. So if you want to have a PDF of everything related to Wallace, uh, this is this is the way to do it. Um, and as well, uh, you can also go on the GitHub uh, GitHub page and basically uh, suggest changes or make reports for things you would like to see. Um, to see appear here in a different way. We're still working to put the Holocene template inside uh, the read the docs, but uh, this is upcoming. Another thing that is upcoming is the possibility to export Holocene data. It's not yet inside uh, uh, the usual way to export tables. This is the uh, quick and dirty way to export sea level data points where you go here and you see all your, uh, the, the main information about your, your sea level uh, data points should appear in a second. There you go. So the Holocene is not yet here and it's not yet also in the export spreadsheet function, which is the one that allows you to uh, just um, run a Python script in the background that gets together your database, packs it into a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet and allows you to to open it uh, in in Excel, um, and you have you have all your your records your records down here. So this is not yet uh, there for the Holocene, but this is something we're working on. And in parallel, we're also working on to allow you not to export just a spreadsheet, but to export a zip file containing lots of different information about the database and the raw data themselves. So this is all upcoming. It's probably going to come in the next version of Wallis. But uh, if you have uh, any suggestion or bug reports uh, or features you would like to see featured in Wallis, please leave a note down here. You can go to the bug reports and let us know. Um, this is uh, uh, the form that uh, that it can uh, that, that you can use. Uh, it will get to us directly, so the, the bug report will get to us directly, and we will give you an answer. So, for example, here are some answers that I that I gave myself uh, down here, uh, so I could be uh, I could be able to keep track of uh, of everything uh, that is not working at the moment in in Wallis. Again, thank you very much for using this uh, and please let us know about uh, any feedback you may have. Uh, even uh, let us know if this is useful for your research. If this is, uh, if you're using this for Holocene and, uh, and um, uh, either Holocene or last interglacial, sorry, uh, please remember to give us credit. Give credit uh, to Warm Coast, which is the ERC project that, that gave the financing to um, 
to make this possible, to make this interface possible and is paying for the development really and the hosting of the database, uh, but also make sure you acknowledge the great work done by the, by the whole C community for this new um, Holocene part. Thank you very much and see you soon.